The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to our FRC Media Studios at Bristol Community College and tonight's Fall River Mayoral Debate. My name is Keith Thibault. I'm the director of FRC Media here at Bristol Community College and I will serve as the moderator for tonight's debate. Voters in Fall River will go to the polls on November 7th to decide who will be the mayor of the city for the next two years. Both candidates on the ballot are joining us tonight. Incumbent Mayor Paul Coogan and challenger former mayor and Bristol County District Attorney Sam Sutter. Thank you both for joining us tonight. Asking questions this evening is a panel of journalists joining us from left to right, Michael Sylvia from the Fall River Reporter, Pam Martin from Fall River Government Television, and Alan Zarek from WSAR Radio. We'd like to thank all of you as well for watching or listening to us tonight. I think we have pretty much all the bases covered on uh, who can hear and watch this uh, debate this evening. You can watch us on Channel 95, FRC Media, FRG TV Channel 18. You could be listening on WSAR Radio or on the Facebook pages of FRC Media, FRG TV, and the Fall River Reporter. The format for tonight's debate is as follows. The debate will last one hour. Each candidate will provide a 90-second opening statement. Then our panelists will ask questions of the candidates. Both candidates will answer each question and will have 90 seconds to do so. We will then allow each candidate one 60-second rebuttal after that question is answered by both candidates. At the end of the, of the debate, the candidates will again have a 90-second closing statement. So let's get started. The order of the opening statement was de determined by draw. And first up will be Sam Sutter, 90 seconds. Keith, I want to begin by thanking you for putting together this debate. I want to thank uh, Mr. Guggen for agreeing to participate. I want to thank the panelists. I've been put together an excellent panel, and I'm excited about this opportunity. Folks, I'm running for mayor again for the city of Fall River because I clearly care deeply about the city. Um, I have lived here for the past 30-plus years. I've represented hundreds of you uh, in my law practice over the past 30 years. I've represented you as district attorney and as mayor, and I'm worried. I'm worried about the direction of the city. I love the job, and I'm positive I can do a better job than the mayor is doing right now. And I'll tell you what I'm worried about. I'm worried about crime, which I submit to you is at an all-time high, and I have the data to prove it. I'm worried about taxes. They're clearly at an all-time high, and I've got a plan to reduce the tax burden on the citizens of Fall River. I'm worried about the lack of new business, something that I think I excelled at when I was mayor by bringing Amazon, Market Basket, the mall, the expansion of, lo of many local, small local businesses. Maybe the, what I'm worried about most of all, because I know so many of these people, is the staggering rents that are continuing to increase because of too much market rate housing coming into the city. I'm worried about homelessness, which of course is connected to the soaring rents. I'm worried about addiction, a crisis that doesn't seem to be getting any better. I see it every single day when I go into Fall River Court. I'm worried about litter in the streets, which we have to do something about in order to attract new business. I think the city's at a crossroads. We've got the train coming. We've got 19 to 21 acres of the waterfront ready to be developed. We've got a deserted downtown and a deserted Flint, and I think I'm the leader that can lead the city forward at this crossroads in the city's Thank history. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mayor Coogan, 90 seconds. Of course, I want to thank the panel. I want to thank uh, Fall River Community Media, FRG TV, SAR, and the Fall River Port for joining us tonight and for Sam participating in the debate. Since most of the attention tonight will be on specific policies and topics, I want to take this time to talk about the qualities that make up a strong leader. The last four years in office have taught me more than I ever could have imagined. As mayor, 
You must be humble and listen to others. You must be creative and flexible. You must be willing to collaborate, sacrifice, and compromise. Building and maintaining relationships is the key. Beyond your attitude, you must be willing to give nights and weekends over to this job. It is what the residents deserve. Snowstorms, house fires, community events, they don't stop on holidays, weekends, or at night. I am proud that my commitment to the city goes far beyond the operating hours of Government Center. As mayor, I believe in the importance of being out in the community, being accessible to the residents, and listening when they have any comments or concerns. As we go into tonight's debate and talk about issues, I want to make it clear. One candidate has a proven track record, a track record of being present at both City Hall and in the community, a track record of successful le leadership even through historic hard times. I look forward to discussing the issues tonight and hope to earn your vote again on November 7th. Thank you. Thank you both. Our first question tonight will be offered by Michael Sylvia of Fall River Reporter and will be directed toward Sam Sutter. Fall River has twice the poverty rate and half the income compared to the rest of the state of Massachusetts. A major reason is because Fall River lacks an industry with high paying jobs. Why does Fall River have such a hard time recruiting new businesses and what can you do to recruit future industries to the city? Well, I think new businesses are at the direction of the mayor and I didn't have a hard time um, getting new businesses to come to Fall River when I was mayor during 2015. As I've said many times, the Amazon project was foundering when I became mayor. I had a meeting with the governor within two months after I was sworn in and he said to me, um, now that you were elected, let's put our shoulder to the wheel and get this project done. And, uh, and we did. And we had a mall that was deserted down to three businesses. But I spoke to the developers and the key word that I learned was anchor tenant. And I was able to get an anchor tenant and that was Market Basket. And I was the one that got on the phone with the head of Market Basket who was uh, w into his 80s but, but very sharp and persuaded him to come to Fall River and be the anchor tenant for the development of the mall. And you can see what takes place now. I was also the mayor when five important local businesses expanded, including Matuk, Blount, um, Millstone Medical, New England Ropes. So I think that the leader of the city is important in getting new business. And we have a lot of potential for new business. Waterfront, downtown, Flint. And I've demonstrated that I can do that. And the wonderful thing about getting new business is that it reduces the tax burden on our citizens. So give me the chance, and you'll see a Thank repeat you. of 2015. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Mayor Coogan, 90 seconds. Uh, sure. I mean, I've heard Sam say Market Basket and uh, Amazon a number of times. Those companies began under Will Flanagan. He brought them to the table years before Sam was ever in office. Um, I have the articles right here and who approved the TIFs. It was a steady stream of mayors going through there at that time. Flanagan, Sutter, Jaisal Carrere, and they were the ones that brought it to fruition. I never saw him at the groundbreaking when we all went up there uh, when it was opened. If he had so much involvement, I would, I would think he would go to see how his, his, uh, his work came to fruition. As far as commercial industry locating in the city of Fall River, um, as everyone knows, our industrial park right now is sold out. We have 950,000 square feet of multi-structure campuses going in on Innovation Way. Blount Seafood put in $65 million in jobs for expansion. Nantucket Seafood, $2.5 million. A cold storage facility. New fifty dollars and $75,000 locations on Riggenback Road. Invigen, the Indian drug company, is locating up there. Um, 60,000 square feet is what they're going to use for their company. There's also improvements planned at the Amazon site. And that goes throughout the city. Gold Metal is looking to expand. Seekonk Supply just opened on the avenue. Um, Taco, Taco, I'm sorry, has 55,000 additional feet planned for the corner over near Kentucky Fried Chicken. South South Coast Hospital's expansion, St. Ed's Hospital. There is a ton of businesses coming to Fall River, which bodes very well for the future of our city. Thank, thank you, Mayor. 60-second rebuttal, Mr. Sutter. Absolutely. 
So, Paul, you're just flat out wrong on that. Market Basket was nowhere near the table when I became mayor. And I put that deal together because I was friendly with Scott Lang, who'd become one of the lawyers for the Demoulises, and he connected me with the leadership of the Demoulises. Just ask Ron Golub and Steve Cohen, who put together the Market Basket deal. I did, and the Market Basket deal led to the development of the mall. And the fact is, the hard fact is, I was there at the groundbreaking, and I was invited by Ron Golub. He called me up and invited me to be there and I was there. So you're incorrect about Market Basket and you're incorrect about the groundbreaking and the fact is that that is perhaps the primary economic engine of the city right now and myself and my team put it together and we did it and we can do the same thing for the downtown, we can do the same thing for the Flint, we can do the same thing for the waterfront. I've proven that I can do it and that will uh, to answer Mr. Sylvia's question. That will create jobs and decrease poverty. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Mayor Coogan, one minute. I noticed he didn't mention Amazon in his rebuttal because he was not there for that. That was done by Will Flanagan and his administration. I was with the people that developed Market Basket today, and they did admit to having one conversation with Mr. Sutter. My position on that is that that mall was well in the works by the time he got there. It was. It, the credit should go to former Mayor Will Flanagan for that one. He did the groundwork. Did Sam pick it up? Absolutely. But he did not bring them in. They didn't come in in his administration. They started in Will Flanagan's. And to be accurate, the growth going on in the city right now in the business sector is unprecedented. If he doesn't want to acknowledge it, he's got to take a ride through the industrial park and see exactly what's going on up there. That's what happens in a city. Look at Taco's expansion down on Pleasant Street. There's a number of companies looking for space all the time. And as the Economic Development Office and the City of Fall River, we work hand in hand to bring these businesses in to create jobs for our residents. Salaries are going up in the City of Fall River, and we have Thank more you. work to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question will be asked by Pamela Martin from FRGTV, and Mayor Coogan will be the first to answer. All right. I put a lot of thought into trying to get these questions to be unique, and I believe that I have found the root cause of homelessness, addiction, school dropout, and crime. It's generational trauma. Would you please define what generational trauma means to you? How prevalent do you think generational trauma is in Fall River, and what do you plan to do to help healing? Mayor Coogan? I don't know what you're talking about. What is, define generational trauma in your question, Pam, please. It's trauma and difficulty that continues on through families, through different generations, poverty rate that goes on through people that perhaps feel that they are stuck in the doldrums with either it's unemployment or uneducation. Un well, sorry, poorly educated. Yeah, I, I, and to be fair, when I deal with, with a homeless um, person, we evaluate each one individually. My, my uh, team that goes out into the camps, we, we have a log, we keep on people now and look for the services they need to try to get them re-engaged in our community. It is a constant struggle. And mental health issues, addiction, uh, depression, anxiety, all are woven into one ball that creates nothing but problems. Many, many, many of our homeless are not even from Fall River. They come in from other areas and we still have to support them. Um, I, as a hands-on mayor that I am, I've been in just about every homeless camp. Um, I've delivered coats. The coldest day of the year is we had them in our cars, driving them to shelter. Um, I, I care for these people. I don't care for the, some of the ones that think uh, crime is the way to go, but some people are down in their luck. They have mental health issues. They have addiction issues. We should do all we can to support them. In the summer, it's extremely challenging because many won't come in even if there is a bed, but we work hard to bring them in and we'll do our best to try to get them successful again in our city. Thank you. Former Mayor Sutter. I just want to say one thing, because obviously we're going to be debating this over the next few debates, but the Amazon project was floundering and the market basket was non-existent when I became mayor. Now, with respect to your question, it's a great question. And I see it every single day that I go into Fall River District Court representing people who are struggling with addiction or struggling with lack of hope or even struggling with homelessness. And I obviously it begins their issues begin when they're very young. I think that um, we have to try to, in, in our schools, even beginning in the elementary schools, we have to try to spread the message of hope better than we are right now. That message of hope that 
you can work hard and have a better life, whether you're a great student, an average student, or a below average student. Hope is always there for you to have a good life for yourself that involves the American dream of owning your own home, owning your own car, having a good job. My daughter went to Cuss for the better part of two years and she saw and we talked about the lack of hope that was already starting to creep in when these kids are 12 and 13 years old. I will spread that message of hope and I'm looking forward to telling you how, but I can tell you this, I have a plan for homelessness which involves finding out the names and the issues of every single homeless person. There are 20 to 30 that are gathering outside my office on a regular basis at 34 okay, Borden Street. Thank so you. I know thank them. you. Thank you very much. Mayor Coogan, minute rebuttal. Yeah, I mean, again, this is not um, look out an office window and see what's outside. This is get into the camps and address their issues. We already have the names and addresses on a database for all of them. Um, we have Nicole Fontaine, we have a policeman, and we have outreach workers that are out in those camps identifying the issues. The homeless numbers I have right in front of me, they're not as bad as some people think. Sheltered versus unsheltered, we have a small uptick. Fall River does a very good job servicing uh, our homeless population. Again, we're not talking about criminals, they're a different class altogether. Um, our addiction numbers have never been so good. In 2018, we had 1,022 overdoses. 2023, we were down to 391. Those numbers are breathtaking. And not because of Paul Coogan, the mayor, because of the work going on in the grounds, in the programs, Narcan, we're working hard to bring these numbers down. Our deaths are at a historic low over the last eight or 10 years. And I, I believe the team we put together makes it possible to address these issues. I have the data right in front of me, and I know that that's what's going to be important to the residents. Thank you. Are we making progress? Thank you. Former Mayor Sutter. We can, do better. we can do better with both issues. We can do better with the addiction issue because that number is still unacceptable. And we can do better with the homelessness issue. And I'm not aware that the mayor has the kind of plan that I'm talking about. I'm talking about bringing in all of the stakeholders, trying to track all of the individuals, finding out what their issues are, trying to get them help, but then there also has to be an enforcement component because I regularly get complaints from people about the problems that those who are not trying to help themselves create. So it has to involve all three. It has to involve a plan, a cohesive plan, and it has to involve compassion first. And then if it still is, if it's failing with an individual person, you have to get the court or the police involved because you can only do so much. Now, to say that I don't know their names, I'm looking out my window. I know Ray, I know Kevin, I know Sue, I know, these are people that are in front of my office every single day that I have a relationship with. So that's wrong, I just had to correct thank, it. Thank you, thank you. Our next question will be asked by Alan Zara from WSER and will be addressed to Sam Sutter. Mr. Sutter, we're talking about uh, economic and job creation issues tonight. And on October 26, the Somerset Zoning Board of Appeals will perhaps take what might be their final vote regarding the Prismian project. And my question is, should Fall River be making a concerted effort if Somerset decides to punt and walk away? Should Fall River be contacting their suburban Cincinnati uh, North American headquarters or their world headquarters in Italy and perhaps getting the ball rolling on offering Fall River up as a possible site for the Prismian project which involves the creation of undersea cable. Well, let's see what Somerset does first. I know that the Prisbean project is controversial in Somerset. I know one of the lawyers that's trying to oppose it. I think that there are reasons to oppose it. Um, uh, let's remember, just a few years ago, we were engaged in a, in a spirited battle to stop Hess LNG from coming down the Taunton River and setting up headquarters very close to actually to where I live. Uh, and. Uh, and fortunately, we were able to marshal the forces together to stop that. So I'm not going to say right now that I'm an expert in that project, but in the event that I'm mayor and Somerset votes it down, then I will need to become an expert in that project. Uh, I, I will approach that, Mr. Zarek, the way I approach everything. I will study it. 
I will learn it thoroughly. I'll put together a small team of advisors and we will address it and make the right decision. Right now, I think we're waiting to see what Somerset does. And right now, I know somebody who's on, on the point of opposing it. And that person's very concerned uh, about what that might bring with respect to environmental problems. So that's what I say. I say it needs more study before I stake out a position. Thank you. Mayor Coogan, 90 seconds. Um, I, how do you know we're not already doing that, Alan? We're, what we're doing is we work with potential businesses all over New England and United States. That is a very big project. Obviously, they chose Somerset first, but there are things necessary that have to fall into place for Somerset. If things change and Fall River has the opportunity to bring a company like that to the city of Fall River. We have some spots where we think we may be able to accommodate them. It may take a little additional work, but we're working all the time with the available land we have to draw businesses to our city, to create jobs, to create tax revenue, and to bring people to our city. That is what we need. And I, 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 I assume your question was based on what you know, but again, there are things going on all the time that are not ready for for the public yet, and I can assure you that when com companies are looking for a spot to locate, we try to put Fall River into the mix. Former Mayor Sutter, one I minute. Th I think we have to look at the long-term cost, at the environmental cost. I think we have to take into consideration what the citizens want. I know there are a lot of citizens in Somerset that are opposing that project. As I said, I know one of the lawyers that's right at the point of it. So it's obviously something that is controversial. It's obviously something that has strong, cogent arguments on both sides. And I'll look at that the same way I look at every issue like that um, when the opportunity comes my way. Mayor Coogan, one minute. Oh, yeah, I think we kind of went through this issue a little bit, but I would like to go back to the homelessness because a plan is only a plan when it's attached to action. If you want to talk about what you're going to do, where have you been? There's been ample opportunities to go to where we feed the homeless, First Baptist Church, Blessed Trinity. There's plenty of time to volunteer to help people that are in distress. I've given them rides in my car. My wife, believe it or not, has knit hats that she's given out at the uh, Tomeo Center when we, have, um, when we have severe weather to try to get people uh, to the support they need. But to talk about what you're gonna do when you've had ample opportunities to get into the fight, pitch in, we have firemen that go every Friday night to the Tomeo Center to serve the homeless a meal. These are the kind of community people we need in the city running the city, not someone that says, I have a plan, wait till I initiate it. Get into the fight now. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's one of the problems I do have with Mr. Sutter. He has been nowhere for the last eight years and other than thank, talking thank about you. a plan. Thank you, thank you. Michael, Sylvia is back up with the next question and that'll be directed to Mayor Coogan. Our news headlines <clears throat> each summer seem to be dominated by teen on teen violence, especially with guns. Studies show that the cure for youth substance abuse and crime is giving them something to do. There seems to be very little for our youth to do in Fall River, especially at night. What have you done as mayor or plan on doing to provide activities for our youth in the future? Obviously, teenagers have said there's nothing to do in the city since I was a kid. We said the same thing. It goes on and on and on. But to that end, Michael, that's a good question. What we've done is institute some basketball leagues that we're looking to expand next year. Our art program, which we partnered with the Narrows on to get kids involved with art and music. FRAC uh, has done a great job with our summer in the park events where we give kids a meal. We let them have a, a basketball tournament. We give them art classes. We let kids do spray paint. And the ages at those events is usually from eight to 18. Uh, I've been to almost every one of them. They're all over the city. They're a way to draw the community together. Specific events for teenagers, we just did the uh, Hot Shot Basketball Tournament with our police department over at um, Britland Park. Uh, well attended, the kids had a real laugh. Uh, we all threw some money into the hats so they could get some shoes. But these are the kind of things that kids need to be involved in. We're trying to upgrade all of our parks right now. F example being uh, the old Dumont Field. That's gonna be a woman's softball area for young girls from eight to 18. We're gonna center softball for them because they didn't have a place of their own. And we want kids involved in sports, theater, music, work, positive events, which will help contribute to the community. And that would be my goal. And we do that all the time. Thank you. Former Mayor Sutter. Well, I just want to go circle back for one second. It's the second time I've heard Mr. Coogan say this. Where was I for the past eight years? I'll tell you where I was. I was doing something you've never done. 
I was building a business, and that's hard work, and that takes almost around-the-clock concentration to rebuild a successful law practice. And I can ask you the same question. During the years that I was district attorney, when I was constantly going to neighborhood associations, I never saw you. When I was constantly going to events in Fall River, I never saw you, so I don't know why, but nevertheless, let me get to your question. So crime is at an all-time high, that's clear. And when I was district attorney, crime was not at an all-time high. In fact, I'm going to show you an article from the Fall River Herald from January of 2014. Fall River sees a three-year drop in violent crime, and it wasn't just violent crime. In 2013, the Spindle City also experienced fewer aggravated assaults, robberies, burglaries, and homicides than in 2011 and 2012, which continued a three-year declining trend in those categories. So we've gone from that situation to where we're number two in violent crime. So we start with that. We've got to look it in the eye. We do need many more activities for kids after school. I want to remind people who may have forgotten that when I was just a private citizen, Mr. Coogan, I every summer had free tennis clinics for the kids of Fall River. I probably taught 300 to 500 kids how to play and as a result, Thank Derby you. had one of its best Thank teams. You. Thank you. Mayor Coogan, Thank you. one minute. Probably at a Durfee event or a Talbot event when I was in the middle school. They had an event almost every night, whether it was soccer, softball, plays. I was always engaged in the community. I don't remember him going to all those neighborhood meetings because occasionally we would go down and talk to him. But if he wants to talk about crime, which I think we should because we're going to get into it, here is the FBI crime data from 2015 to now. This is when Sam Sutter was our mayor. He had a crime rate four or five times ours. This is right out of the FBI data. I got that working with the Police Department. My position on Mr. Sutter is he is not engaged. He is not in our community. People all over say, where has he been? I agree. He should have got involved. He did ask me for a job. I will grant you that. I had no interest in hiring him because when he came to me, I had already heard about his lack of work ethic. He wanted to go to work for CDA as a part-time lawyer. I said, no, thank you. Everybody in the building said he wasn't in the building. He was not there doing his job. Thank he you. was out and about. We thank need you. a hands-on mayor you. in the city of Fargo. Thank you. thank you. Former Mayor Sutter. Do you have of that? Because that's a complete lie. Now, people have told me you're a liar, Paul, but that's a complete lie. I never asked you for a job at all. That is, that is, a, total, that is a total lie. I was rebuilding a law practice with my, my uh, the person that I'm affiliated with, Ron Rismini. I never asked for a job with CDA, ever. We didn't meet about that at all. Show me the proof of it because it didn't take place. Let's get back to crime, okay? <laughs> Show me the proof. Why are you laughing? laughing. That's a lie. You come on and you do exactly what Holy you smoke. Talk, talk, talk. Paul, please. Okay, let okay, me, please, let me please. Mr. Let Sutter's time. You asked me for a job, Mr. Sutter's but time, you have please. no work Mr. ethic. Mr. Sutter's time. Paul, anybody that knows me, knows that my work ethic is second to none. Anybody that knows Please. me, anybody that's ever, I've ever, rep do you think you can build a law practice without having a work ethic and getting results for people in the courtroom? I was an extremely hardworking DA, an extremely hardworking mayor. I'll put my work ethic up against yours. That's why repeatedly this past summer, I would go to events and you wouldn't be there. I would go to events and you would leave. But the business about applying for a job, that, folks, is a complete lie. I did not thank you, thank you, thank you both. Thank, thank you, thank you. When, 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 you have, when you have the time, you can use that, your time where you like. <laughs> next up is Pamela Martin, who will address the next question to Sam Sutter. Okay, uh, Homeland Security maintains its warning that the United States remains in a heightened threat environment. It's terrifying, and I dislike really even discussing within kids' earshot why the reasons why. So my question, how are you planning for citywide drills, emergency disaster relief, instant notification to parents, and communication with our rescue, first responders, and hospital systems? So it was something that always concerned me when I was district attorney and mayor. Uh, I felt that there, was, that there was more that could be done, uh, and I think we've got to do more because I think that the world is becoming more perilous. I'm very dismayed that we haven't been able to do uh, more uh, with respect to uh, gun violence. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm going to get involved in that fight uh, if I'm elected mayor again. I find, it, I find it very surprising 
uh, that this mayor is not a member of Mayors Against Illegal Guns because that would help us in the fight against gun violence. I find it very surprising that this mayor hasn't done more to bring back ShotSpotter or some similar technology because we have 13 cities in Massachusetts, Boston, Worcester, Springfield, New Bedford, that have it. But your question has to do with preparedness, preparedness for a disaster. And I'm telling you right now, under a Sam Sutter administration, we will do much more than is presently being done because that is absolutely crucial um, for kids to go to school and feel safe and for parents to take their kids to school or put their kids on the bus to go to school and have that, that feeling of that they are going to be protected. So I agree with you. We need to do more. Thank you. Mayor Coogan. Well, always a lot. ShotSpotter, when he was mayor, was 90% inaccurate in the city of Fall River. I have the statistics. We spent $140,000 on a system that was not helping us. It did not do what we want. We've gone a different route, which has helped us to reduce crime in the city of Fall River. As you can see from the FBI statistics, I'm not gonna put any taxpayers' money into ShotSpotter until that technology is as effective as it could be. To Pamela's question about readiness for a big event, Let's look again at what happened. We had the protests in the city of Fall River over the summer. Police were on high alert. We had extra support from both the Bristol County Sheriff and others. I made sure as the mayor, I marched with the protesters. I worked with the police. I made sure I was in the community. I made sure I was at the rallies. I made people feel comfortable to know that we were engaging them. Fall River didn't have the problems other communities had. We had a police force that was more community based that worked with them. But again, this was going on right in downtown next to his office. I never saw Sam, never saw him, never saw him come out, talk to the kids, try to support the police. He was not around. Those were high tension times in the city of Fall River and they needed attention. I never heard from him, never saw him. He's, he's been so disengaged, he can't walk out his front door to a rally. Thank you. Former Mayor Sutter, one minute. I've been more involved uh, when I was at, when I was away from politics than you were between 2007 and 2015. I never saw you. I didn't even know who you were. So now let's talk about the issue though. Jack Souza said in 2006, after a shooting in the Flint, gun violence is at an all time high in Fall River and I'm worried. But within my term as district attorney, I want to read you this. Violent crime in Fall River has been decreasing for the past three years, especially shootings, which have fallen more than 60%. That was on my watch as district attorney. If ShotSpotter is so ineffective, why is it such a successful company? So why does Worcester have ShotSpotter, Springfield have ShotSpotter, New Bedford have ShotSpotter, Boston have ShotSpotter? On your watch, violent crime has gone up, shootings have gone up, we're the second most violent city in the state next to North Adams. We've got to do something about that in order to attract new business. But to get back to your great question, we also have to do more so that our kids are Thank prepared you. and feel Thank safe you. when they go to school. Thank, Thank you. you. Mayor Coogan, one minute. Um, you notice he did not address the protests right outside his door. He talked about 07. Here's the crime data from 07 when he was district attorney from the FBI lab right here. I don't see any great reductions. He left in 14. I don't believe it's accurate. I have the shots fired in the city of Fall River. In 2018, we had 45. Up to this point right now, we have 40. So we may come back to where we were. Shots are not going through the roof as, as some people try to scare our residents into voting for them. I'm not gonna do that. I want our residents to know Fall River is a safe city. Are there bad people out there? Absolutely. Is it the Fall River police job to arrest them and put them in jail? Absolutely. But our city is not out of control. And I really do get distressed when someone comes in from the middle of nowhere, eight years out, to tell the residents to be fearful. It's scare tactics, and I know it's not going to earn them any votes. Our residents are way smarter than that. Okay. Thank you. Alan Zarek has our next question. will be directed to Mayor Coogan. <coughs> Curious, uh, as I listen to this, uh, there has obviously been uh, some issues with public perception of the Fall River Police Department, specifically uh, officers that have uh, been accused of various malfeasance uh, against uh, suspects. And 
I'll continue this theme. How do you uh, rehabilitate the image of the Fall River Police Department, or does it need rehabilitation? Is it doing the job it's supposed to be doing with the resources that it has, and is it doing it under the, the auspice of uh, current uh, laws and current statutes? Um, what, every profession I've worked in my whole life, there are bad actors. Teachers, mayors, police, and I think that there were some bad police in our department. Um, they've been arrested, they've been charged, they've left the force. That's the appropriate process to deal with people that will not follow the law, even if they're supposed to be good guys. And that's how it should always work. My position on all this stuff is, right now in the city of Fall River, with body cameras, we've noticed the least amount of civilian complaints going into our police department almost than ever. They're not getting the calls all the time about so-and-so uh, swore at me, so-and-so uh, leaned on my car. Those have gone straight down, as they should, which was one of the reasons why I pushed so hard for body cameras. I believe they protect the police, they protect the residents, and they make the community safer. Those are direct that's a direct correlation to taking that action. I think that that's something we're doing right now with our police. We've trained them up, we record the things we need to record, and we're going forward. Did the police get a bad knock for a few years? Absolutely. But I, I know those guys. They're, they're friends of mine, and they work hard to keep the city safe. I'm not going to knock the Forever Police Department like my opponent does when he goes on these rants. My position is those guys are working hard. We gave them a substantial raise, which I am proud to say I would do any day of the week. They needed to be competitive. They need to be staying in Fall River, and we need their help to get this city back Thank where you. it should be. Thank you. Former Mayor Sutter. So first off, I want to just go back to what he said before. It's almost as if he's saying white is gray, night is day. There's the press conference with Mayor Will Flanagan and Dan Racine, and here's the opening line in the Herald News. I'd been DA at this point in time for seven years. I'll read it again. Violent crime in Fall River has been decreasing for the past three years, especially shootings, which have fallen by more than 60%. Are you saying this is a mistake, that white is green? And in 2013, the Spindle City experienced fewer aggravated assaults, robberies, burglaries, and homicides, which continued a three-year declining trend. Let's get to the question. The question is the Fall River Police Department. So I'm pretty sure I've got more friends over there than you do, and I know how they feel about me, and I know how they feel about my leadership, uh, and they experienced it. For eight years when I was district attorney, they experienced what my leadership was like. They saw me work closely with the police when the previous district attorney had not. And they saw crime continue to decline. And they saw the kind of, the, the, the kind of synergy that we had. We didn't have the kinds of incidents that have taken place on your watch. Why? Because you don't have that kind of leadership. You don't have that kind of strong, decisive leadership. And they want that and they have told me that. So, that's where it begins. And the thing that I'm going to do that you're not doing is I'm going to meet with them regularly. I'm going to be over there all the time. I'm comfortable over there, Paul. I led many investigations over there. Thank you. Uh, when Thank I was you. both an Thank assistant you. district Thank attorney Thank and you. the district attorney. Thank you very much. Mayor Coogan, one minute. Again, the FBI crime data is wrong in Sam's world. This is how he lives. It's not accurate. I have it. He knows it. My position with him is we'll see who the police want to work with going forward if they endorse another candidate because they know you so well, Sam. I don't believe that for a minute. Again, notice what we're dealing with tonight. Words, words, words. I have the shot data. He doesn't. I have the FBI crime data. He doesn't. I'm not going to try to make up stories to, to, to hurt this guy's political career. It's my position he does a better job than I ever could himself with some of the things he says. He needs to know that the Forever Police Department work with me on a daily basis. They respect me and they know I do take care of it. I worked with the police every day when I was in the schools. They were in my office all the time and they changed the SROs. You work with teenagers. You work with police, you get very comfortable with them, and they're very comfortable with me. We'll see what happens when endorsements come out and his friends endorse him, because I know what's going to happen. Thank they're you. not a fan of his. Thank you. Thank you. Former Mayor Sutter, one minute. So, uh, Mr. Coogan, 
I was district attorney for eight years. I'm sure you're familiar with what I did. Do you think I did the job on homicides, solving homicides, increasing the rate from 53% to almost 90%? Do you think I did the job on cold cases, all those cold cases that we solved? Do you think I did the job on reducing shootings? Do you think I did the job on sexual assaults? And most of all, have you ever done anything as innovative as I did with the volunteer initiative? where I required my prosecutors, all 80 of them, to go into the communities, including Fall River, and work as mentors, counselors, coaches. And have you ever done anything like I did with the free tennis clinics, where you're out there every Saturday morning from 9 to 1, teaching kids how to play the sport? So um, the leadership I've demonstrated, folks, and uh, I will demonstrate it again if you give me the opportunity, and you'll have a better police department and a better city. Thank you. Mike Sylvia is back up with the next question and it will be directed to Sam Sutter. This summer, this summer, Governor Healy declared a state of emergency for a migrant crisis, even asking residents to take in families. Most communities seem to be filling their hotels with migrants. Do you recommend Fall River residents take in migrants? And do you support bringing migrant families to Fall River at the same time we have Fall River families living in the woods? Well, let's remember the definitions that are so important on a very sensitive subject. So my wife, who's on my left, uh, is an immigrant, came to this country in 1968 at the age of six and a half, um, worked hard. Uh, she and her sisters and mother became citizens. And so, uh, and every American family um, has an immigrant past. Um, and so I support lawful immigration. What I do not support is unlawful immigration. And we obviously have a crisis at the border, which is now spilling over to Massachusetts. So do I have compassion for those who are without a place to live? I do. But do I believe that Fall River needs to concentrate on Fall River's problems and to try to send that message to Governor Healy? Newton has a median household income of 154,000. Fall River has a median household income of 49,000. So do I think that communities that are clearly struggling much less than Fall River need to do more than the governor's asking Fall River to do with respect to this issue? The answer is categorically yes. Just ask the average Fall River citizen what they Thank think Thank of this Thank idea. Thank you. And they're against it. Thank you. Mayor Coogan, 90 seconds. Yeah, I, I, on this one, I guess Sam and I are going to agree. Many of our neighboring communities are not even at their 10% minimum threshold. If they would come to that and allow cities like Fall River that do need additional supports, that do get additional public safety money, that do get additional school money because of the population that we're trying to coach up right now, that's what I think we should be working on, supporting Fall River. And I do that with um, Governor Healy and uh, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. If I've had personal conversations with them about this, I want them to understand the stresses and the uh, things that go on with our residents in Fall River right now, we have to work to do better. We always support people, but at the same time, we're dealing with a bunch of um, issues that have piled up on us over the years, and we're going to fix those and focus on Fall River. That would be my goal. Again, not any way would I ever, you know, reject helping someone, but at the same time, let's have our other neighboring communities get up to the minimum 10% housing. Thank you. Can we one. One, the Paul and I agree. One, one minute. <laughs> for, there you go. <laughs> I'm sure it won't last. Four minutes. One minute. You know, um, I'll be quick. I love war stories and I love politics. And uh, there were many times during the famous Nixon Kennedy debates in 1960, the first debate, where one of them said, I agree. So on this one, Paul and I agree, and we can move on to the next question. May I set a rebuttal? No, no, no. We'll, we'll yeah. save okay. that. We'll yeah. save the All time. Right. Yep. Pamela Martin is up with the next question to be directed to Mayor Coogan. All right, Mayor, in person, people have come up to me with gripes involving factions, favoritism, and poor communication between the Veterans Service Office and veterans groups that are separate from the Veterans Office. I see division between these leaders. So who's hurt? The most vulnerable 
our disabled older vets and young veterans that suffer from PTSD. What will you do to mend these hurts, to regroup, to refocus the efforts of agencies, employees, and volunteers and veterans of all eras? I think that's already in process, Pam. Um, our new veteran service officer, Michelle Hamilton, is, uh, has a tremendous work ethic, and she is out in the community at Pine Street meeting with the veterans around the clock. She's brought on a number of people to help them get their services, get their benefits, and she works with veterans. On a, she came to us with a lot of experience, and she's very much hands-on, and that's what we were looking for in that office. We did have a few glitches with prior veteran, uh, with one of the prior veteran service officers. I think it knocked us back a little bit, but we have since moved on from that, and I think you'll see that program ramp up. The veterans are a key piece to any city in the United States of America. They're the only reason we're sitting here tonight having this debate and being allowed to go forward. We will do all we can to support them. We've done it a number of times, whether it was increasing the quarters money from the 10,000 to the 100,000, or whether we do things like the Memorial Day Parade or the veterans benefits that we work on. I have no problem supporting the veterans and we'll go forward with that. I'll put my faith in Michelle Hamilton. I think she'll take us forward in that area. I do agree with you. There's been some glitches down the road though. Former Mayor Sutter. Well, um, unfortunately, we're gonna have to go back to to the divisiveness and the disagreement, but I, I will say this. Um, I, I believe that the veterans are right there with police and fire, that we have to do everything we can for the veterans because like police and fire, they put their lives on the line for us. Um, I thought your question, uh, Pam, was going to have to do with more with favoritism than with veterans. So let me talk about the veterans first. I don't understand why um, the mayor did not honor the request from the veterans uh, to uh, the, the place on Pine to update their computers. Uh, when I went over there for the um, luncheon in August, uh, they complained to me about that. They said it was approximately a, a 10, to, if I have the number correctly, a $10,000 to $20,000 fix. Um, the mayor had all of that ARPA money, and I don't know why he didn't do that. And then last week when we addressed the firefighters union, a veteran complained to me about the roof, said that it would cost $50,000. Once again, I don't know why the ARPA money couldn't be used for that. Now, um, the favoritism question is one that I'll return to at some point, but I think both of those should have been done, and, um, and I'd like to hear what he says about why he didn't. Yeah. Mayor, one minute. Okay. Again, I've been to that veteran luncheon every year. We are aware of the computers. We're not quite ready to have them installed or put in yet. When you show up once every eight years, sometimes people tell you stories. If you don't have the background, you take it as gospel. That's not how things move in a city. You have to be in getting different opinions, different facts all the time. But when you don't go to things and you're not a comfortable participant, then what happens is someone will say this and you run with it. It happens all the time in politics. And for Sam to come here and announce that he went to a veteran's luncheon, he hasn't gone to any in eight years. So it's the same thing. Now I'm here, now I'm campaigning, now I'm looking for support. We are gonna take care of our veterans. We do across the board. I haven't seen him at any of the veterans events. The Gold Star Mothers on, on Snake Hill, did he go this year? Maybe, but eight years, nothing. Did he go to any of the veterans benefits down at Miller Green? Never seen him. Never seen him. Now he's a veterans person. This is what happens in politics. Thank you. People have to see through that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mayor. Former Mayor Sutton. One minute. So when I was district attorney, when I was mayor, I went to every veterans event I could go to, and I never saw you. Now that was nine years. That was eight years of being district attorney, one year of being mayor. I never saw you, especially in 2015, when you decided to run for school committee that year, I still didn't see you at these events. So the reason why, I'll say it again, folks, the reason why you didn't see me is because it was hard. Harder, I think, than anything you've ever done in your career. Hard to fall from the sixth floor where my office was and the fifth floor where my office had been when I was district attorney in New Bedford, all the way to the ground and then rebuild a law practice. That was hard. That took a combination of grit, 
hard work, tenacity. I'm proud of what I did. It wasn't easy. And that's part of the message of hope that I'm going to spread if I become mayor. If you think it was easy to go back into the jails, to meet with potential clients after Thank I you. had been district attorney. Thank you. Thank you, you haven't done anything that Thank hard you. in your life. Thank you. Alan Zarek, back up with the next question directed to Sam Sutter. One of the issues that has been percolating throughout the summer and into the fall in the city of Fall River has been the issue of the Bank Street Armory. Uh, the city council will vote apparently for a third time later this month. There are those who want to rehab that building into market rate apartments. There are others on city council, Vice President Linda Pereira among them, who want the city to keep that building, rehabilitate it, have veterans office, maybe an office of tourism, what have you. What ultimately should happen to that building? Former Mayor Sutter. Uh, the building should be kept by the city. That's way too little money for the building to be sold for, what Alan MacCumber is offering. But even if he was offering more than that, that building is a Fall River treasure. That building is right there with the old Durfee High School. And you remember what happened to that uh, back in the early 90s when it was turned into a, 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 a court. Um, that's like the St. Anne's Church. I mean, there are these landmarks in Fall River, like the, like the, the Holy Ghost Feast. There are these signature events and landmarks. The armory is one of them. I can't even begin to tell you how much time I spent at that armory with my son either in basketball leagues or practicing sh uh, dribbling drills, shooting, and I, I love it. And I think that without a huge investment of money, we can turn that armory back into what it was, which was a community center. I know from personal experience, by the way, I never saw you there. During all those years that I was going there with my son Cliff, I never saw you at all. And I was there regularly. Just ask Grace Gerling. Just ask Jameson Souza. So here's what I want to say in closing. And I'm sure we'll go back and forth on this. We've got enough market rate housing. Market rate housing is driving up our rents. And it's, dri and it's driving out people like Jennifer Medeiros. And it's scaring people like Mr. Paiva. Thank and you. And we've got to do something Thank about you. that. Thank you. Mayor Coogan. All right. This is another one of Sam's great stories. You notice what he said. Not one word about how to pay for it. He'll come back now and throw some more drivel out. But my position is he had no, he had a two minute opportunity to say, I think we should save it. This is how. He talked about basketball and you know, everything is great. My point is it's a 10 to $12 million investment. New Bedford was just offered their armory from the state in 22 for $10. Lynn is putting housing in theirs right now. Go to the Lynn Arbery Armory website. Newton is turning their armory into housing because the cost to rehab these things is extremely, extremely difficult. And then to maintain it, staff it, if we can put it back on the tax rolls and save the building. My goal is to make that building a show place so people can see the history of our city. What's, in the, what's inside it? is not important. I have no problem with a young couple walking up the street and getting a, uh, a burrito at a habanero. That's what we want in downtown Fall River. We do not have the 10 to $12 million to invest. If we did, I might go a different way. But that kind of investment is too much. And that's why you see a majority of the counselors who know the finances. The others know it too. But at the same time, it's a big, big expense. The taxpayers will get buckled with a, with a, a bond or amount of money like that. And now I expect him to come back and give us his theory on how he's going to pay for it when he never said a word about it when he had the opportunity. Thank you. For me, one minute. Um, I talked about a city treasure, which it is. I talked about my love of the building, which I'm sure you don't dispute. I talked about the amount of time that I spent there, either with basketball or working with Jameson and Grace on the free tennis clinics. I could have told you a story about watching Chris Heron and Bill Reynolds and someone else uh, work on Chris's three-point shooting just before the NBA draft in 98 or 99 when I was there constantly with my son. We need to keep that building for the people of Fall River because what it has meant, not just for me, 
but for thousands of people in Fall River who have had similar experiences to mine. That's something that you obviously just don't get, Paul. And we don't need more market rate housing because it's driving up our rents and it's forcing people out of their apartments. And I, I'm telling you that may be the issue that I am the, of the many issues I'm passionate about, that may be number one. Thank you. So there you, you have it. Thank you. Mayor Coogan, one minute. I'm disappointed. I really believed he'd come up with some kind of a story about how he was going to pay for it, but we got more anecdotal stories about his time in the Army. He didn't spend more time in the Army than I did. That's where Durfee played when I was a kid. When you go to Durfee, you go to the Armory. For him to come out now and say he's, I, don't, I, I, I just can't really listen much more to this stuff. My position with the Armory is we don't have 10 or $12 million. If he would have said I have the money in my pocket, I would have walked over and shook his hand and said, let's go. We don't have that kind of money to put on a tax. Market rate housing, does he know what he's saying? He's telling electricians, plumbers, cement workers, painters, tilers, we don't want you working in Fall River. If we're building things that people come from out of town to live in, he's against that? I don't understand it. The, the, nine, the 15 units that Tony Cadero put in in the Garment Workers Union, everyone moved here from out of town. They brought their money to Fall River to go to a restaurant, to go to a movie, to get their car fixed. That's what we Thank need, you. stimulate our economy. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're going to have time for one more question, and I'd like to have the moderator to have the privilege to ask the final question, and it will be uh, geared toward um, Mayor Coogan. Back to what you've just been talking about, housing. Um, we mentioned that a lot of market rate housing is going up, but a lot of residents in Fall River are having a difficult time paying their rent every month. Can you please give us some concrete plans on how you propose to increase the number of affordable housing units in Fall River. Mayor Coogan, 90 seconds. Um, I believe right now, Keith, our affordable or subsidized units are roughly 28% of our uh, of, of available housing. A city to be healthy and thrive needs a third, a third, a third. They need a broad range of housing opportunities. If people are moving here, or if people that are in a second or third floor on one of our three tenements decides to move out because they want a granite countertop, they want a gym downstairs, that unit becomes available. To be competitive, the, th the, the philosophy is those prices will start to drift down, which will then hopefully stabilize the rent market in the city of Forever and move us forward. But I am not going to listen again when someone talks about I'm against market rate housing, when thousands and thousands of people depend on those jobs and he washes it away with a wave of his hand. Tell me where the carpenters are going tonight, Sam. Tell me where the electricians are going. And tell me who's going to pay for it. My, my, my disagreement with people is you have to have a vibrant city that takes care of people that need support, that has a vibrant middle class, and that has people that have money so that they can support the economy. This is what a city needs. And for him to just say, we don't need plumbers, we don't need electricians, is absolutely so ridiculous. It makes no sense to me. Thank you. Former Mayor Sutter, you know, that's, That reminds me of, of what you said last night that made absolutely no sense. So, of course, I want electricians, carpenters, bricklayers to have jobs, but not through more market rate housing. We've got plenty of that. There was an affordable trust fund with $400 million, and you didn't put in for it, Paul. And I, the only reason I can think of why you didn't is because you care more about the developers than about those who are paying rents. Then we had the uh, ARPA money, the American Rescue Plan money. And once again, you didn't set aside anywhere near the amount of money that similarly situated mayors did, like John Mitchell, who set aside $10 million for affordable housing. Why? Once again, because you are in tow with the developers and not with the renters. This is what I would do, folks, in order to try to control our rents and not force people out of their apartments. I would see if we could get any money from that affordable trust fund. I would definitely set aside some of the $30 million that's left in ARPA money, and I would begin a systematic outreach to the landlords about holding the line on rents, 
Can we go as far as the petition, the state representative from Cambridge, who's got a, 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 a bill now to bring back rent control? I'm not saying at this time we need to do that, but we need to control the rents. And th that's going to take the kind of hands-on care and concern that I utilized to get the things done that I got done Thank when you. I was district attorney and mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Mayor Coogan, one minute. Well, that's just, again, a word mash of I don't know what that was. He, he's, not, he's not the guy that's going to control the costs for the homeowners. He's not the guy that's going to do that. When he had the opportunity, he hit them all with a $10 trash fee. And he piled it right on their back. And he walked away right down the street to where his office is now and closed down the senior center. That's how he's going to make the city more livable. My job as mayor is to bring in new growth new money, new taxes. His job was to do the simplest thing you could find, hit everybody with another fee and a tax, and he's going to take it and close the senior center. That's not what Fall River needs. Return to 2015 with Sam Sutterson's view of the, Sam Sutter's view of the city, that's crazy. We need to look forward, bring growth, bring new taxes, build and stabilize our revenue and get off of this train with name calling. I ask him tonight, name the greedy developers you talked about last night, Sam. Give us a couple of names so Thank I you. know to stay away Thank from you. them. Thank you. Former Mayor Sutter, one minute. Well, um, I, I put in the fee in order to save 25 cop jobs, 25 firefighter jobs, and 25 city hall jobs. I walked into a budget situation. This is why Will Flanagan was recalled. I walked into a budget situation with a $3 million shortfall, and I'd made a pledge to meet net school spending. So once I did that, then I was faced with what's called a Hobson's choice between either laying off those police and fire and city hall workers or putting in the fee. And I wish I had said it's only going to be a one-year fee, but I wasn't sure. So I was honest with the people. But I saved the jobs, Paul. We were already 50 behind New Bedford in police, 50 behind in fire, and there was no way I was going to allow us to get to go 75 behind if we wanted to attract new business, which I did. So I can tell you right now, folks, there's a lot of wasteful spending that has taken place. 68 new jobs he's created. Who's going to pay for those? But I promise you, when I get elected mayor, I will bring in more Thank new you. business in one Thank year you. than he's brought in in Thank four. You. Thank you very much. All right, it is time now for our closing statements. 90 seconds apiece, and the first candidate to do so will be Mayor Coogan. Um, obviously, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight and listening to the debate. Uh, my commitment is very strong to the city of Fall River. Before becoming mayor, I spent 30 years working with the students and families on our community, in our community to better their lives. And as mayor, I have put the needs of residents first, and I will work tirelessly to bring stability, integrity, and prosperity back to Fall River. My time has shown me how much the residents of Fall River appreciate a mayor who is out in the community. Whether I'm shopping at Market Basket or stopping by a Little League game, people feel comfortable sharing their successes and concerns with me. That's the difference between words and actions. One of us on this stage has an unwavering presence in the community. One of us has nearly four years of experience in managing a city, building a budget, resolving conflict and crisis. One of us has made the important relationships needed to move the city forward. That's why I've been endorsed by Karen Polito, Charlie Baker, Maura Healy, Kim Driscoll and Jake Oshenkloss. They want to work with me. They want to help Fall River. That's what we're looking forward to as we go into our second, our third term. The momentum and the relationships I have built in this office are what Fall River needs to move forward and continue growing. I have the skills, experience, and work ethic needed to lead this city forward, and I respectfully and humbly ask for your vote on November 7th. Thank you. Thank you. Former Mayor Sutter, 90 seconds. Thank you, Keith, and thank you to the panel. Great questions, great moderator. You have a clear choice on November 7th. Paul Coogan, who in nearly two full terms has not demonstrated the will or the skill to be the leader of our city. 
a phantom mayor who knowingly represents the seri misrepresents the serious of seriousness of our crime problem, who delegates his responsibility to address the critical housing and rent crisis that we face, who hasn't made the slightest attempt to stop the never-ending tax increases and uncontrolled spending that is hurting the average citizen. Instead, he's shown his inability to lead the city with decisiveness, his lack of leadership skill, has created chaos in our city departments. His failure to hold department heads accountable has resulted in staggering costs, both in legal fees and in settlements. How can he, after two terms on the school committee and two terms as chairman of the school committee, explain why we have no progressive discipline plan and no zero tolerance plan for sexual harassment of employees in the school department? As a matter of fact, we don't even have that plan on the city side. He ran on transparency, but he's been anything but. The Herald News has to take him to court to find out why John Perry was fired. He's proven to be a delegator in chief, not the chief, not the leader he was elected to be. I've shown my leadership, both in the public sector and the private sector. I've made the tough choices a leader has to make. I've been successful in both the public sector and the private sector. And I'll Thank be you. a mayor who leads Thank our you. city from the front. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you to the candidates and the panel for joining us tonight. And I'd also like to thank our FRC media staff working behind the scenes, Steve Rice, Michelle Dumas, and our timekeeper in, in our studio here, Lucy Cabral. You can watch replays of this program on Channel 95, Channel 90, uh, 18 as well. And you can also watch it on our special FRC media webpage, frmedia.org slash election 2023. Please vote on November 7th. And later that evening, please join us as we collaborate once again with FRGTV for the election results. We hope you can join us at that time.